Hi, today's look is inspired by a very long conversation I had with a friend who just broken up with her boyfriend after two years together and she was having to go and meet up with him. I think it was only three or four weeks after the split, or maybe less actually. And we ended up discussing it. We were on a job together for three whole days. So what she was going to wear, how she was going to do her hair, what she was going to do beforehand, how she was going to deal with him, what she was going to say, what she, you know, every every everything in infinite detail. And it just made me think that only girls would ever do that. You know, you can never imagine a guy being able to talk about something like that for three days, but we certainly did. And we also got, there was some guys that we were working with that um, we kind of got involved with the conversation and they were feeding back and that was quite interesting. So this look is all about the, um, yeah, some of the things really that came out of that conversation. So, which I'll tell you about in a second, but I'll start my base. I've already done my primer and I use Clarins Beauty Flash Balm because it's a good one if you're, you know, you need a little bit of extra help. And I'm going to go straight into base and I'm using today Healthy Mix Serum because it gives the skin a nice glow. And this is number 52. Though so this guy had been a bit of a... Or shall we say, to put it nicely, he had behaved less than honourably. She's very upset and had been crying a lot, but also she's really, really angry. So for your base, I would suggest if you have been crying a lot, you're puffy, you're not obviously feeling at your best, you don't need to really pile on the foundation to cover every little bit of redness, every little blemish. However, you might need a little bit more than usual just to even out things a bit if there is a bit of blotchiness going on. And I think one of the most important things to say about makeup for when you're meeting up with your ex is that I believe it shouldn't be any more than you normally would or that they were used to seeing you in, but it certainly shouldn't be any less than they're used to seeing you in. If you go lighter, maybe less makeup than they've ever seen you in before, it's just going to make you look even tireder, more exhausted, more heartbroken than you probably do already. And if you put a lot more on than they're used to seeing you in and you're used to having on. Everyone that we spoke to, especially the guys that day, agreed that if they were to see an ex shortly after they'd broken up and the girl was wearing loads and loads of more makeup than normal, they would presume that she wasn't coping very well. And we don't want them to think that. We want to be putting our best foot forward. So I finished my base and whatever you need to do, I mean, if, you're only, if you've never worn foundation before and you only wear tinted moisturiser then, Obviously, stick with that, but you may need a little bit of extra cover-up. Okay, so on to eyes. Now, eyes is the place where you can tell. You can always see the upset, the exhaustion, whatever. And if you've been crying a lot, you're going to need to really look after them and give them some extra TLC. I'm going to use some Healthy Mix um, Concealer in number 52. But I suggest, what I would suggest is if you are crying a lot the night before, you know, you know things always seem ten times worse at night and you get into that thing of kind of crying yourself to sleep, I'd say the night before you're going to meet your ex, if you can, this sounds crazy, but even if you've gone to bed and you've been crying, try and get up right before you go to sleep and splash cold water on your face just to clear off all those old tears, don't let them dry on your face because you'll wake up looking a hell of a lot better than if you literally cry yourself to sleep and then you'll wake up all swollen and your face will be all over the place. And secondly, um, if you can, not eat salty food. So having a massive Chinese takeaway <laughs> and crying yourself to sleep, I know is what probably you feel like doing, but if you can avoid doing both of those things, and then redness around the eyes. And firstly, I'm just going to conceal the dark underneath. So you're going to need to spend a bit of time just concealing those away. If you're more puffy underneath, then just put the concealer underneath the actual area that's swollen. This way you'll sort of lift that area only. And because if, if you put it over the puffy area, it'll come you know, more forward and you'll end up looking even more puffy. So if you are very puffy... Just dab under there. So just really put that where the darkness is. And eye drops. If your eyes are very, very red, use eye drops before you start any of your makeup, before you do your foundation or anything. Put a few drops in, let that all take its course and, and lighten it. Okay, so the next thing to do is for eyes, 
if your eyes are very red, use a base or you can use a primer that has a bit of a tint in. The By Terry one is very good because it's quite nurturing but also it covers any redness. I'm just going to use a MAC paint pot and using this all over as a base before you do any eyeshadow, just going to lift up that redness. And because you only need a tiny amount, you're still able to look really natural and fresh. So use that all over to get rid of the redness. And you can also use a little bit underneath if you really need to, close to those lashes. Now for eye makeup, as I say, stick with what you're roughly what you're used to wearing. Because if you always wear eyeliner and then suddenly don't, especially at a time when you're feeling tired, you're going to look exhausted and you're going to look sick. So I think stick to kind of what you're used to wearing, but we're going to do it even more beautifully than than usual. So for me, I, I would probably go with neutrals. A good tip is to use matte shadows. I'll tell you why now. I'm going to use these Becca ones, which are great. I'm going to use a mixture of the darker and the lighter brown. The reason matte shadows are good is because if you're very swollen, if you've been crying, the matte shadow will recess the area. Anything shimmery comes forward. So a little bit, especially, I know for me, if I get very puffy eyes, I get really hooded and quite swollen, sort of where my socket line normally would be. So by cheating into that area with something that it's matte, I can kind of put the shape back into my eye sockets there and just make them look, I want them to look kind of awake and rested and beautiful. So just look straight ahead and wherever there are, you have a really swollen bit of eye. If you're more swollen on the lids, put it on the lids. If you're more swollen into the socket line, put it there. But just look and when you sort of push a dark shadowy matte shadow into it, it's amazing how it just really pushes that area back and you can more or less sculpt and reshape your eyes, which is really useful if you've been upset. So I'm doing exactly the same thing underneath. And this again is really useful for any redness that you've got there or super puffiness because you can use the dark shadow to recess the little bumps and lumps under there. Just make sure you really blend it in. This is kind of like a secret makeup. This is makeup therapy. Another really good thing to use is a beige tone pencil along the waterline. So if you've been upset and crying, that area can get really red. So just putting a small amount in there just helps to lift the redness. Next I'm going to curl eyelashes. I'm a really, really good curl because this will also help to lift and open a tired eye. For mascara, I recommend you use Waterproof. I'm going to use Hypnose by Lancome. I think waterproof is definitely the best option because you're going to be feeling emotional. You don't know how you're going to take it when you see them. You might end up having to go off to the ladies and having a bit of a moment in there. And the last thing you want to do is cry off all your mascara and rub it all over your face. It's never going to be a good thing, is it, meeting up with someone so soon. Oh, here comes Peachop. Peachop's come to reassure us that whatever happens... We don't need to worry and we've got to stay strong. Is that what you wanted to say? Okay, thank you very much for that. Let's carry on. He's taking my light. <laughs> yeah, I was saying it's never going to be a good thing. Meeting up with an ex so soon after you've broken up. It's so horrible. And I know that makeup and all this stuff I'm talking about now is kind of a bit of fun and it's not really going to help how you feel inside. It's not genuinely going to make you feel, there's one of Peachop's hairs, better about things. But I think if you can just make yourself as good as you possibly can, it just helps you to feel more confident and feel stronger and just help you get through it. On to brows. There isn't really a special way of doing brows, whatever you're used to doing. Your usual brow. I will just say one thing though. Keep them nice and polished and not too harsh because 
harshly drawn on brows are not only aging, but will also make you look just dreadful and rough and tired. So next I'm gonna use highlighter, and this is my opportunity now to use my new Becca Shimmering Skin Perfector, the new shade they've done, which is Moonshine. And this sits in between pearl and opal, so it's not as white as pearl, and it's not as peachy as opal, so it's perfect for a little bit darker skins or for really pale skins during the summer. Highlighter is such a great thing to use, really, really subtle liquid highlighter when your skin is looking a bit rough if you haven't been sleeping and your skin's looking dull, which will probably happen if you're feeling extremely stressed and down about things. And having that secret glow on the skin, really subtly. What I will say is don't use it under the eyes if you're a bit puffy under the eyes, because if it goes anywhere near where you're swollen, it'll highlight those areas and they'll look even more swollen. Now onto the secret weapon of any makeup where you want to look great if you're feeling a bit tired. So the meeting up with the ex or any situation like that, and that's blusher. I'm going to use cream blusher. In fact, I'm going to use a lip cream, a hot poured lipstick, just because I like this colour. This is Nude Pink by Laura Mercier. I'm just going to pat this on. And even if you have redness in your skin, don't forget we haven't done the concealing yet. We're going to conceal if you have redness down here or if there are any spots and things. We're going to do the concealing later, but I think a little bit touch of pink blush put right onto the apple of the cheeks and then blended up and out very subtly just instantly lifts the face it makes you look well rested well slept which is key we don't want to give the game away that we're not sleeping and we're not feeling great and it just totally changes the whole feel of a face and if you're glowing that much he might even look at you and think, uh-oh, she's met someone else. She looks like she's already in love with someone else. Now, if he doesn't think that, he's just not going to be quite be able to put his finger on it. So onto the concealing, we're going to conceal everything. So any red blotches you've had. Now's a really good time in the makeup to do it because your foundation is sunk in and settled in and you're able to see, you know, you might have hives coming up on your neck or rashes or everyone's skin reacts differently to stress so you want to have a bit of time just to get rid of any blemishes any redness and i think overall if you can allow yourself a bit more time than usual to do your makeup simply because you're going to be you know maybe feeling stressed and frustrated angry heartbroken tired all of those things that maybe even make your you know you've, you might even be shaking a bit so having a little bit more time to really relax in a way and do your makeup because certainly like concealing can be quite meditative and it's quite a good time now to really think about things and maybe think about what you want to say. Before I move on to lips I'm just going to do a tiny bit of powder. How much you need you know obviously depends on your skin type. Now the first thing I'm going to use on my lips is some lip balm. This is eight hour cream actually and using a cotton bud really give them a good massage so rolling and twisting the cotton bud and what this does is gives them a really good exfoliation so any loose bits of skin or dry chap bits will all come off I know you can buy lip, lip exfoliators for this but I personally think this works better now in terms of lip color even if you're used to wearing a really pale beige or a nude Maybe you want to sort of put a slightly brighter colour on, simply because those sorts of colours, if you're already feeling tired and drained, they'll make you look even more tired and drained. Same with bright reds, you know, if you've got a lot of red in your face or, you know, you're blotchy and, and things because you've been upset, they will equally pick up the red in the skin. So something kind of mid-toned that's quite vibrant, but not too vibrant, is sometimes the best bet. I'm using this lip pencil in blush, which is a little bit brighter than I would normally during the day, but if I was feeling really tired, a colour like this would help to lift my skin. Now I'm going to really blend that in with a lip brush. You could use fingers. It's going to get a nice stain there of colour. 
And then for over the top, I think nothing too gloopy. Likewise, nothing too perfect. You don't want to put a load of lipstick on that's absolutely immaculate because you do get upset, it ends up coming off. It's something quite low maintenance. I'm going to put this very bright lip gloss on. It looks very bright here, but it's quite sheer. This is a Barry M one. And just put a touch just into the centre so the lips look nice and sort of juicy and pretty, but not like you're caked in makeup. The other thing my friend and I were talking about were nails and I think we both decided that just really clean, this is Essie Mademoiselle, sort of nicely manicured looking nails, looked very low maintenance and very groomed and also like you're not trying too hard, you're not sort of making an effort for him obviously. And then for hair, again just really clean glossy hair, none of this sort of greasy, I'm so depressed I can't even wash my hair sort of look washed hair freshly washed a secret blow dry was a good idea we thought so it's kind of blow dried but then brushed out so it looks like you've sort of done it yourself and if you normally have it tied back then go with the tied back look but maybe just a slightly nicer version than normal and in terms of clothes my friend was going to just wear her super great jeans that made her bottom look fantastic because um she felt that firstly she was going to stay really calm and dignified and because the guy would be in a total arse she just wanted to say what she wanted to say, look fantastic and then walk out, walk away and the last thing he would see would be this perfect bottom. And um, I think I agree with her actually because I think you just want to be really comfortable and wear clothes that are very flattering and again nothing too try hard like you're trying to really dress up and trying to impress him I think to do it in a low low key but very beautiful way is, is far better so that's the finished look really and it's a look you could do to meet up with an ex it's not the only look obviously it depends on your personal style and what the circumstances are I would say that when you go out you should take with you definitely some of these and a little bit of makeup remover just in case you get into an accident and makeup starts running and things definitely take some concealer as well and the other thing I'd say is when you've finished your makeup and you're about to go out the door because sometimes when you're stressed and you're feeling anxious you can end up putting on more makeup than maybe you planned something like a clean brush like a clean kabuki brush I would just go over you know just check that you haven't put on too much blusher you haven't put on too much maybe eyeshadow, maybe even just go over your eyeshadow and make sure, either with a clean brush or with a cotton bud, make sure that that's all kind of smoothed down because sometimes just, even if you're angry and you put your makeup on, I'm going to say this to him, I'm going to say that to him, you would be like, put it on the blusher and it's going to build up and build up. So just have a little look, check and just, you know, take a clean brush over and just soften everything down and um, make sure there's nothing that's looking too harsh. So um, it's never going to be a great meeting is it I mean either you're going to be hoping that you get back together and you're not you know and if it is over then just try and stay as strong as you can just be strong look gorgeous say what you want to say and walk away I guarantee a year from now you'll be in a whole different place maybe even a month from now you can walk around the corner and meet the love of your life and maybe this guy really isn't the love of your life so keep your head up high and stay strong and um, hope it goes well